Well, ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris and her campaign have been caught again with trying to manipulate the crowd, this time with curtains. This is at the Desert Diamond Arena in Phoenix, which I believe at this point doesn't have a tenant. The NHL team was kicked out of there, but this arena seats, I would say, around 20,000 people. And if you're someone that's really not familiar with arenas and how they work when it comes to curtains and things like that, there are, and, and it's very clear, upper deck sections that were curtained off by the Harris campaign because for whatever reason, obviously, you know, there's not a lot of demand for her. They can't sell the tickets. There was also a report that this was invite only. I think that might even be a more weird fact if that is true. I saw RNC Research tweeted out, how does an arena rally that has, a, you know, they're saying, I mean, take a look at how they're swinging it here. Harris rides momentum into Arizona for what campaign says is her largest rally yet. So her largest rally includes uh, curtaining off sections of the upper deck. And the reason you do that is because you can't sell the place out and you don't want people to see all of the empty seats. So you bring a curtain down. This is not exclusive to rallies or anything like that. This is just what happens, you know, if you've got like college teams playing in an NBA arena, you're not going to sell out the upper deck. You don't even sell tickets there. You bring a curtain down to block off the empty seats because the empty seats will look bad. So that's exactly what Harris did on both sides. As you can see, all of these, even the, it looks like the middle, the, the, the mezzanine middle uh, club section is, is, tar, is a curtained off as well. The upper section, the middle section, all curtained off, and they're actually trying to flex that this is some huge rally. You've got this person saying that it's fake. No, this is actually real. But again, they're tarping off the empty sections to make it seem like it's sold out. She got 15,000 in an arena that has a capacity of 20K in Phoenix or near Phoenix, highly popula popula population area. You've got Trump in Montana, Bozeman, with 10K inside, fully sold out, and then another 20K outside. Trump gets 30K in a town in Montana. Harris can't even sell out 20,000 seats in Phoenix, Arizona. So that's what's going on here. I'm just trying to explain to everyone how crazy it is, and it's just more manipulation. She's got all this hype. She's got all this momentum. She cannot sell out an arena without a significant performer. And it's proof right here. These are tarps. There are all the empty seats behind them. It looks like they didn't even sell tickets in these, you know, smaller upper sections, or you know, or the uh, the suite level. Now that is normal when it comes to a rally. You're not going to normally sell suite tickets, but obviously, if Trump went to Phoenix, uh, Arizona, I have a 1,000 percent certainty. Not only would he sell out this arena, there would be no tarps. Trump would have people overflowing, and that's very important, and that's why Trump needs to start hitting up the swing states extremely, uh, you know, frequently, and a lot of people are angry at Trump that he went to Montana last night, uh, but it was a very good rally, and apparently he said in, when, when he was on his plane yesterday that he's going to be going to the swing states today and tomorrow, so I don't know if he's going to be doing rallies, hopefully he will be. Uh, but uh, here it is, Kamala's rally in Arizona tonight is invitation only. I just can't believe that that would be true. This is a rally at a, a public arena. How would it be invitation only? At a public arena that has a capacity of 20,000. This is not some little fundraiser thing where you're at some function inside of a gym and you can only have like 100 people and it's exclusive. The, the campaign is just all so ridiculous. Um, obviously, people got very mad at Trump for this uh, truth social thing. This was just very strange that Trump would say this. It will be interesting to see, to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed the next time he enters the UFC ring. MAGA 2024 arrest his advisors immediately. It's not his advisors that have any control over this. I mean, they can tell him not to do this stuff, but he's always going to have control over what he says via social media. That's just the reality of it. They can encourage him not to say this type of stuff. And really, it's just a weird thing for Trump to say. I, you know, I don't think it really matters, but it's just, you know, this, this is why people say that it's good that Trump's not on X because if he says stuff on X, it's going to come back to hurt him even more because more people are going to see it. Although I don't know if it really matters considering, you know, they do all post basically all of his uh, social media posts onto X anyways, just not from his account. So, you know, that's the Kamala rally right there. This plane uh, crash was crazy. It looks like one of those controllable RC planes. I've never seen a plane operate like that. That is ridiculous. That had nothing to do with politics, but it was just crazy. 
uh, we, we've got this Kamala Harris basically reading the exact same speech and the sad thing with Kamala is it's so disingenuous she does the thing where she tries to relate to people by looking back and saying oh I used to work at McDonald's and, and she says the exact same thing in every single rally the exact same way you will not find that with Trump now sure if you're campaigning and you're doing rallies constantly you're going to hit on the same talking points but you're not going to be saying the exact same life stories if you have any sort of originality that's not Harris of course she has none and that's just the reality of it FBI and DHS concerned of about a potential attack at the DNC if something happens that will be not via Republican I can guarantee that it will not be via, via Republican. So that would be friendly fire if they did something to try and make people feel bad for liberals. So I'm getting out ahead of this, and so are other conservatives. But to say that, that's just ridiculous. Uh, nobody's going to be doing anything. If, if something does happen, that'll be a manipulation tactic. This was a Trump's message talking about him possibly campaigning uh, on Saturday and Sunday, apparently, I'm guessing he knows that people are angry that he's not that he hasn't been to swing states yet this week. Not that it, again, it's like, well, are we really going to dissect this in August? I think. Listen, a lot of Republicans, and this is what people need to hear. They're very like squirmish. They they saw the huge lead against Biden, where Trump had like a 75 percent chance to win the election a month and a half ago. Do people not understand whether it was Biden, Kamala, or whoever? The Democratic funding apparatus, like this is a general election. You don't think they're going to come out swinging and the polls are going to tighten up. Did you just think Trump was going to skip to winning, you know, with 400 electoral votes and like a 90% chance to win? That just wasn't going to happen. This is what I think happened. And this is why people can't, they're panicking so much. Trump's lead was artificially inflated because a lot of the higher up Democrats wanted Biden out. So they stopped spending any money on Biden's campaign for like the final three weeks. But meanwhile, the polls were still being done because Biden was still at that time the candidate. It was a three week period right after the debate. Joe Biden possibly was going to drop out. Jill and Hunter take him to Camp David. They scream at him like broke the decibel meter. And they say you need to stay in and everyone else within the Democratic Party wanted him out. So they refused funding. They leaked their own horrible internal polls. And that gave Republicans kind of this, in terms of the polls, this false sense of, of a blowout feel that it was just going to be, oh, it's all easy. And now you see a few polls with Kamala Harris up and it's like, oh my God, Donald Trump is the worst ever. The campaign is in a horrible spot. Go through some adversity. Who cares? Oh my God, Kamala Harris is leading by 1%. Oh, it's over. Donald Trump is just so bad. Why didn't he go to a, a, a why didn't he do a rally on August 7th? That's going to lose him the election. Like people just have to calm down. You're going to face adversity. You're not going to skip and win the election with like a 90% chance. That's just ridiculous. And by the way, if they had committed to Biden, I don't you know, I don't know if this would have happened to where no, it wouldn't have happened because there was no energy in Biden's campaign, but the funding apparatus would have allowed Biden to his numbers to be juiced up at least to near Trump's numbers. It was never going to be this thing where Trump has like, well, number one, it also doesn't help that Trump, you know, is, is very uh, divisive, which obviously we like Honest, you know, th that's what we need, but that's also going to turn off a lot of people and also low info people who just see a clip or two of Trump. They don't like it. It's not like Trump has this 65% approval rating or 60%, although you could argue that it's basically impossible to get that nowadays because of how partisan our country is, but it was never going to be this crazy easy thing. So there's definitely things that Trump needs to improve, but I just don't know what these people thought. Did they think Trump was going to lead all these national polls by like six points? Like, oh my God, it's like the end of the world. Kamala Harris has a lead. Oh, I'm so worried. Like, this is what happens. Face some adversity. So what? It's the election. It ebbs and flows. There was a point back in April where Biden went up over Trump. Biden, who had a, who had an approval rating at the time of like not minus 18. So it, it just, it is what it is. Look, Trump needs to go to the swing states. Kamala had the huge hype from the, the leftist cult. It's hilarious how they call you know you know Trump supporters cult people. I mean, some of the reactions not been good from Trump supporters where they just defend him no matter what. I agree, but still, Kamala Harris has done nothing to. I mean, she's done nothing except exist and say the same talking point over and over and over and over again at these rallies that are fake. Not only fake in the sense of you know the, the support online is drummed up. 
they're literally faking the rallies with AI and they're bringing down curtains to hide all the empty seats. That's how fake it is. So this idea that she improves her approval rating by 20% and now she's this liberal light and she was one of the worst VPs and it's on record, it's Colbert, it's all the mainstream Democrats, leftists talking back in March saying that Kamala Harris had a 28% approval rating and that they were thinking about replacing the VP, not the president. They were saying they were going to replace Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris was dragging by Biden down, but now that Kamala Harris is 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 into being, you know, facing Donald Trump, she's this hero. Oh yes. So, so that's kind of how that works, and that just shows you the, tr- the, the you know that these people will vote for anyone no matter what. They'll swing it any way possible. Uh, that is just the reality when it comes to that. What is happening in the UK? The United the, the United Kingdom police commissioner threatens to extradite jail U.S. citizens, including Elon Musk, over online posts. It's a, it's a, it's a full-blown horror story, what's going on in the U.K., and I don't know what the solution is. It's going to have to, I mean, I don't know what you do. There's got to be like 70% of those citizens, natural-born white citizens, that just have to disagree with what's going on, and there has to be something that's done by the people, by the will of the people, because What's happening there, it is, it's, it's nightmares. It, it's nightmare fuel. I thought this was a funny clip. Like, I just don't know why they can't embrace what their party is. So you've got Tim Waltz, and whether it's Waltz or Kamala, who really cares who the messenger is, but he was talking about how Republicans want to take your rights. Like, why can these people just not embrace the fact that they want open borders, they want illegal immigrants into the country, they want massive government overreach to where the government controls everything, that's their party platform. That's the whole idea of why they hate Elon Musk, they hate freedom of speech, because if people have too much power, they're too dumb, the government needs to say, you can't say that, you can't say that, the government's smarter than us. It's just like these people... Why not just embrace what you are? You want a massive government that has insane control over the citizens and you want more illegal immigrants into this country to be able to, you know, deal with all the losses, the population losses you're experiencing in California, New York and other states because of horrible democratic state leadership. So why go through this charade where it's like, we care about your rights, we just want to censor everything you say if we don't agree with it, if the establishment regime doesn't agree with it, but no, we care about your rights, but if you're just too dumb, you know, the government's gonna tell you what to do, you're too stupid, and and half of these people like socialists, they hate cars, and they think people should live in small apartment buildings because we're going to destroy the world, I guess, if we have land. I mean, yeah, no, it is true. It is true. We should all move into big cities. We should give the government all of our land. They're going to put it to better use than we will. We shouldn't physically be able to own land. The government, I mean, why do we have cars? Cars are air pollution. We shouldn't have those. Let's give the government more power over the uh, us by, so we take our transportation away. But no, they're going to give us all the rights, and Republicans are the evil ones taking rights away. Elon Musk, who, you know, you want to call him conservative one, he's definitely more of a Republican now. He's the one that put free speech on X, not the Democrats. The Democrats didn't want free speech. There were horrible examples and obvious examples of Republicans being censored for being conservative on X, and Democrats said it's a private company, and they should be able to do it. And so the Democrats got very, very... Uh, jealous of the United Kingdom. And this has been going on now for a few weeks where you'll hear some of these Democrats, they're like, it's so sad. Why does our government not have the same control over the citizens that the United Kingdom has? But no, Tim Waltz is going to tell us that the Democrats are the ones that are going to save us. They want strong borders. Like, why not just embrace your platform? If they embrace their platform, I'd have more respect. Like this whole thing where it's like, like Kamala Harris talking about the border. You, your, your administration, you were the VP, you repe- repealed everything Trump put in place on day one. Go back and look at all the executive orders in, in terms of immigration on January 20th of 2021. It is unbelievable. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.